but I, I actually lived in Worcester yeah. for a while. I think I spoke okay. to you a couple of years ago, and we talked about that briefly. But yeah, I'd like to start off with that. Like you, so you actually lived in Worcester? Yes, I was uh, living in Worcester for oh Jesus, probably three years, two wow. years, three years. Where did you live? The one apartment I lived in was was off of Park Ave. Okay. I okay. Can't, I can't remember the name of the street, and then I ended up moving and. It was up towards. It was on the other side of town. God, I can't remember. I can't remember the streets. I can. I can vaguely remember the apartments, but that was. But that was the area. But yeah, man, I was. I was there banging around for a couple of years, and then, then I ended up on the South Shore. Yeah. I, now you were. Were you? I think last time we talked, you said you were in the Brockton area. Yes, uh, Brockton, Weymouth, uh, Pembroke, down in that area. Yeah. Yeah. So did you? Did you play with any bands in the Worcester area at that time? You know, I was playing in in a function band. I mean, we were doing <clears throat> we were doing uh, small clubs, mainly weddings, mainly kind of formal things like that, and that was basically like my day job. Right. And then when, once I had enough chicken cordon bleu, I decided, <laughs> well, I need to get a job and then start writing my own stuff and working with, with some other people. So that that was that transition. Well, it's it's you know I I don't blame you for not remembering exactly what the streets are because you have traveled the world what like a million times over uh, <laughs> not just with TSO but with sabotage and and uh, other projects and stuff like that. Um, you're coming back to Worcester, coming back to your old uh, stomping grounds on November 26 for two big shows at the DCU Center. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here. The tour starts in about a month, and then by the end of December. You will have played, TSO would have played over 100 shows, is that correct? Yes, it is. And to clarify that, we have two different touring groups okay. that, are, that are on the road at the same time. We have an East Coast group, which I'm, I'm a part of, and then there's a West Coast group. And that's, that's the way we can cover the country and do all these shows and play all these cities in that short amount of time. We've been doing this in this fashion since the year 2000. We, uh, in 1999, we, we did a a trial tour. It was only seven shows, and at the time we were trying to keep this this touring window, you know, basically between Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. And uh, in the year two thousand, we had seventy shows. So the Paul O'Neill, our creator, our visionary, our, our everything, the late great Paul O'Neill, him and his management team decided, well, let's let's take the original band and split it in two. We'll fill out the remaining cast members, and and this way we can cover all the ground that we need to cover. And, and that's the way we've been rolling ever since the year 2000. And, uh, and nonetheless, it is still a, a grueling tour schedule. We, we play basically eight shows in five days every week. Yeah. And you, met, you mentioned the amount of shows, and, and we cover close to, to a million people every year. So it's, it's just amazing what has happened, and, and, and it's still getting bigger and stronger every year. Well, it's, it's, it's more than, TSO is more than just a band and a show now. You are a tradition like going to grandma's house or cutting down your own Christmas tree or going to see, uh, you know, in the center of your town or your city that lighting up the, the tree every year, you are part of a holiday tradition. That's an amazing accomplishment. Well, you know, when you say that, it, it seems like, well, that's a pretty bold statement. But then when you think about it, you know, we have become. I mean, we've, yeah. we've been on the road touring. This will be our, I mean, aside from 2020. Right. We've been on the road now for 23 years. These tours have become tradition for a lot of families. This is what a lot of families yeah. do for their their get together, you know, and and then or bringing friends, whatever. But it's become something that people not only they love seeing our shows, they play the Christmas music, they play the holiday music all throughout the season. We are on television, you know, the Ghost of Christmas Eve, that movie, which is the story that we are performing this year. That movie is is all over the Hallmark Channel and, and such such things during the holiday season. Our music is on radios. It's in commercials. You can hear it at, at pro sports games. It it really is everywhere. But to say the word tradition, like I said, it seems kind of bold. But it's but true. It's we, true. <laughs> we've we've be, we've become something that I mean, there there are people that that can't function during the holidays until they've seen our show. Right. So that's 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 pretty cool. But. Uh, you know, here again, this is a testament to Paul O'Neill in the vision that he had when he created the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. He wanted to create something that was going to be for everybody. And if you come to our shows, 
you look around, you see children to grandparents, everybody in between. You know, musically, we try to cover every musical genre that there is. And that kind of reflects on our audience, too. You know, we've, we've got very traditional kind of, kind of folks. We've got rockers. We've got everything in between. So it's, you know, Paul, <clears throat> Paul wanted to not only create something musically that was going to connect with the masses, but he also wanted to bring this show that was just going to be spectacular. And the man succeeding in doing this. And, you know, even though we lost Paul five years ago, TSO is just getting bigger and stronger every year. And there, there seemingly is, is no end in sight. It's, it's amazing. Can you pinpoint a reason why it gets bigger and stronger every year i mean it uh, you know the music is amazing the show is unbelievable it's just incredible the the size of the show you guys put on um or is it the story it's just it, like you said every year it gets bigger and bigger like you guys you know are up there like um christmas eve sarajevo one of the top like downloads uh yeah. you know online you're up there with like Mariah Carey and Burl Ives and Nat yep. King Cole as far as, as Christmas <laughs> music goes. Seriously, and, the, and I say that because those are like, those are traditional Christmas songs that people play every year that they've been doing for 50, 60, maybe 70 years. And I see that yeah. for TSO too. What, what do you think it is that brings those people well, back? I, I think it's all of the above. You know, as you mentioned, the story, the music, the show. You know, in my opinion... We started touring in 1999, and we were we toured the Ghost or Christmas Eve and, and other stories, which was our first CD that we released. That story is so wonderful, and I think that when people realize, wow, we're not just coming to see this band, you know, there's a story. And for people who have never seen us, we we have a story segment of the show, which is usually the first half of the show. We have a narrator. Uh, he, he narrates Paul's story, which is weaves in and out of all these songs. And the songs themselves contain so many traditional holiday themes. You know, there's, if you've never heard a note of TSO before, you've heard a number of the musical themes that Paul incorporated into his songs, not to mention the classical music themes. So there's something very recognizable throughout the entire show. But I think the story, once people realized, wow, you know, this is something for my family wow, my parents would love this, my kids would love this. The next thing you know, it just literally snowballed into what we're doing today and all of the above. I mean, all of the ingredients, and here again, people ask me about the show all the time. And When you, when you try to lay the elements out on a piece of paper, you, you look at it and go, well, how does this work? You know, you've yeah, got, yeah. You've got a, a holiday story, you've got a narrator, you've got lasers, you've got fire, you've got what? This is insane. <laughs> but my best response is just come see the show. Because it really is not only visually spectacular, but the message is great, the story is great. The, the musical and vocal performance on stage is, is really fantastic, too. I'm always, I'm always pinching myself at the amount of talent that I get to work with. And I think people, people realize, once they, once they kind of get a taste of the show, how much hard work is involved in putting the show on, first of all. But the fact that it's a show that really means something, and, and it's just got something for everybody. What What is the biggest crowd TSO has ever played for? Oh, my God. You know, honestly, and this this is, sounds unbelievable, we played New Year's Eve at the Brandenburg Gates. I believe it was uh, 14 going into 15, 2014 going into 2015. We ended our, sh our tour in Buffalo. We flew directly to Berlin. So we played this New Year's Eve show there's this huge plaza they said that there was a million people there oh. and i'll be honest with you when i was on stage playing there was people for a mile i mean just as far as i could see there was people and it was the most surreal <laughs> thing i i could never imagine in my wildest dreams and when i was younger i'd be playing in front of a crowd like that but it was unbelievable and you know they said there was over a million people i don't know I mean, who's counting, right? right. But when you say <laughs> when you say a million people, it's like, how is that even possible? But yeah, I, I can I can remember to this day sitting on stage going, I can't believe that we're we're doing this. Unreal. Well, how do you how, like how do you deal with that? Like when you get on stage and you look out, whether it's there or in a giant arena or state, like there's like a million people out there. Do you just say, okay, I'm not even going to look at them. I'm just going to concentrate on the music. You know, oddly enough, I get more nervous playing in front of a small crowd 
you know, because yeah. cause it, because then it becomes a little bit more individual. You know, it's like I can see everybody's face, like, all eyes are on you. When we play these arenas that are sold out, I mean, sure, I can still pe- see people's faces, but it's just this huge group of people. It becomes a little less personal, I think. Same with some of the festivals that I played in Europe. You know, we, we played in front of 80,000 people a number of times. And it's when you get up there, you're just playing in front of this thing. It's out there, it's living, it's breathing, it's, it's applauding, it's jumping up around and, and reacting to you. But, <clears throat> but like I said, sitting in a, in a small club with, with 20 people there, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that to me is a little more intimidating because you're just, it's, it's such a one-on-one experience. But, yeah. but nonetheless, either way, you've got to be on your toes. I right. mean, the, the large crowd does not allow for, for anybody to be any less uh, focused on what they're doing. Uh, and again, uh, with this tour and, and all, all the other TSO tours, um, you guys are giving some of the proceeds to the, to the shows uh, to charity once again this year. And that's a very important thing, right? Again, that was one of Paul O'Neill's ideas too, right? Yeah, yeah. Paul and his family instituted this from the very first ticket that we sold. And, you know, Paul was a very considerate, giving person and compassionate one dollar per ticket has been given given to a local charity ever since the first ticket we sold, and to date we've donated over eighteen million dollars. Covered everything from the Salvation Army to children's hospitals to zoos to food banks, and you know Paul just felt that this was the such an easy thing to do. It involves the audience. The audience is literally helping people in their own community, maybe helping somebody that they even know. But Paul also realized too that this was a you know, the holidays can be a very festive time for a lot of people and difficult for others. And he felt that this was just a, a, a small gesture on our part to maybe, you know, put a smile on somebody's face and help them get back on their feet again. So we're very proud of it. I mean, that's another thing. You look at that figure and go, wow, it's just, it adds up over the years. And it, it really is, it really is amazing. Well, especially when, what, what was it you mentioned during a tour? How, like how many people do you get in front of? Like a million people? Like during a, well, the, the, the yeah. Between the two, the two touring groups, it's usually between 900,000 and a million people that we perform to. So That's a lot. You know, That's a lot, that, yeah. All of that really adds up. It adds up from year to year. And, and you know, here again, it's, it's the holidays. It's a right. time for giving and a time for, uh, you know, being, being compassionate. And, and this is just, just something that we're all very, very proud of. Also, I was reading that you, you worked very hard to keep the ticket prices low, which is so difficult, and especially with the kind of show that that tso puts on and not, and then two touring groups too but you so not only do you give a dollar from every ticket but you also try to keep it low so more people can have a chance to experience the show yeah paul <clears throat> over the years i know he took the uh ticket agencies the task promotion agencies over this because you know he knew families were coming to our show you know you say you get a carload of people that adds up really really quick and he wanted people to be able to come to the show without breaking the bank, you know, without putting themselves behind, putting themselves in the red, come to the show, buy a program, get some popcorn, have a drink, whatever, and just make it affordable for people to come see us and bring others with them, you know, and and to do this year after year, he felt that, you know, the majority of our audience comes to see us every year. So he wanted to make sure that they were going to be able to afford to continue doing that. And, you know, Paul just felt, too, that, that the show really had something something special to offer. And making it easier for people to see our show is, is a huge part of our success. So, hey, you know, you go see any major tour and look at those ticket prices mm. and then compare that to what we charge and then come see our show. Right. You know, our show was sec- second to none when it comes to, you know, performing, you know, acts being on tour. It really is amazing what we do. It's probably one of the most unique things you will ever see. But it's always been reasonable, and for all the for all the reasons I just mentioned, then hey, you know it keeps people coming back every year, and here, like I said, TSO is is growing every year and getting stronger. Well, two uh, two shows on November twenty sixth over here at the DCU Center in Worcester, uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra, and uh, once again, if you've never seen uh, TSO live, uh, you will again, like you said earlier, you will not be able to continue your holidays until you've seen TSO <laughs> because it's that it's that amazing of a show. So Jeff Plate, uh, drummer for TSO, thank you so much for taking the time. One last question from your time living in Worcester. 
Is there anything you miss about this city? I come from a small town in upstate New York. That's where I live now. And when I moved out to Worcester, it really, like, wow. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah. This is a lot bigger than Horse Says New York, I tell you that. <laughs> but I, I love the fact that when I got out there, the music scene was, was very vibrant. I mean, there was all different kinds of bands. I met all different kinds of people. We used to go out all the time. I, and I just, I loved it. It was, it was the right move for me at the right time. And I still, you know, when we played the DCU Center, I remember when I lived there, and I think it was 1984, maybe, going, going to the Worcester Centrum, as yes. it was called then. Yes. And seeing, Ju seeing Judas Priest. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> to, to this day, to this day when, I, when we play there, I go up and I find that seat, or, or where, you know, close to where I was sitting, and just sit there and kind of look at the stage and go, wow. You know, I remember sitting up here 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. 40 That's years awesome. ago almost, and going, wow, I wish I could be up there, and, you know, and here I am. So it's, it's pretty cool, but it's, it's always nice to be able to come back to these towns that you spent some time in. Was that the Defenders of the Faith tour? I think it was. I remember uh, the band was Wasted that opened up for them. It was uh, Pete Way's band from UFO. Right, right. Uh, yep, and I, uh, yeah, I just remember sitting up there watching the band go, wow, <laughs> Rob Halford was just. Oh, yeah. On fire. He was like, you know, hitting notes. He was breaking glass that night. It was unbelievable. Because I think but, I, I was at that the, show. Yeah. Yep. And I remember, I remember going to see. Uh, honestly, one of the best shows I ever saw there was Jeff Beck. He was on the Guitar Shop tour. Oh yeah. And the opening act was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh my God. And and I went there by myself, and I found one of the uh, the entryways into the upper deck. And for some reason, the sound just gathered in that little area, and it was like I had headphones on. It was just perfect. <laughs> and Jeff Beck came out and played. Terry Bazio was his drummer. Oh, wow. And Ter Terry Bazio did this drum solo that I was like, oh, my God, I, I got to go home and start practicing. Right. It just put me to shame. <laughs> but that was, that was just a really cool show. And like I said, I was there by myself. I couldn't get anybody to go with me, so I just thought right, I bought a ticket and walked in. But nonetheless, is you know when I come back to that arena, it, it's got some really cool memories for yeah. me in in the town itself. So always looking forward to getting back there. All right, well, Jeff, thank you so much for your time. TSO again, DCU Center, November twenty sixth. Two shows. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, thank you for taking the time, sir, and good luck with this tour. We we really appreciate your efforts with the charity, keeping the tickets low, and continuing that tradition that Paul O'Neill you know started many years ago. So thank you very much. Absolutely, and thank you very. Much.